Hi, welcome to the COVID-19 Lake Norman and North Mecklenburg briefing call. Today is Monday, May 18th. My name is John Bradford. I'm your briefing call moderator. This week starts our ninth week of doing these three days a week. I'm a small business owner. I have two companies right here uh, in uh, the heart of uh, North Mecklenburg. I have about 40 employees between these two companies. I really work hard to be a job creator for our area, and I'm also a former member of the North Carolina House of Representatives. The purpose of these calls is to bring together healthcare experts, government officials, and business leaders to provide regular COVID-19 briefings to update, educate, and support the North Mecklenburg region during the outbreak. Okay, if y'all can go on mute, that'd be great. Just a couple little bit of guidance here uh, from CDC. Just uh, we have some uh, disinfecting uh, stuff here for public workspaces, businesses, schools, and homes. Just remember to develop a plan implement your plan and then maintain and revise. That's the best thing you can be doing as we're starting to return back to work uh, for both employers and employees and anyone else. The total number of cases, 1.467 million in the U.S., 88,000 deaths. Uh, you can see a heat map here. Uh, North Carolina is running about middle of the pack in terms of total number of cases. Uh, there is a rumor control website. There's really been no new rumors, uh, which is good, uh, but I always love sharing uh, the rumor control website at FEMA. Uh, I check these every day just to see if something new comes along, and if there is, I will share it with you. But right now, there's no new rumors. But if you want to check out the, the rumors of the past, you can go to this website, fema.gov slash coronavirus rumor control. Uh, just from a, uh, the SBA and the United States Department of Treasury, there's still $100 billion available to small businesses and nonprofits. Uh, this is important because a lot of nonprofits I know have asked how do you know who's going to help us? Can we get some help? And the answer is yes. There's the uh, emergency economic disaster loan. It's called IDLE, and then the uh, payroll protection program called PPP. Uh, today, which is May 18th, is the last day of amnesty for a review and reconsideration period for any PP loans over $2 million. I think we all saw some of the larger companies that had taken PPP money and then returned it. So that started an amnesty program for companies who are significant in size and could have liquidity and access to capital. If they took PPP money, they need to really review it, reconsider it, and then return it. Uh, and today's the last day for that amnesty. And then any company less than $2 million uh, if you received a PP loan, you will have been deemed to have met the necess uh, necessity test and consider a safe harbor. Uh, there, we're still under a state of emergency here in North Carolina. The, the, you have a call center number, 1-866-462-3821. And uh, you can also use uh, 211 on your phone for texting. Uh, the North Carolina dashboard, right, this just came out uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, we're at 661 deaths. Uh, that's up from Friday. Friday, there were 641 deaths, so it's up by 20 deaths. Uh, the hospitalizations at 511. It was 492 Friday, and the number of counties is still holding at 99 out of 100. There's still one county that has not been impacted, or at least not a reported case, that is, and so 99 out of 100. These two graphs here show positive tests as a percent of total tests. The dotted blue line clearly downward trending, and the graph on the right, current COVID-19 hospitalizations, the blue dotted line uh, is, you know, flattening. I mean, it, you can kind of see it's just kind of leveling because this scale um, is not real huge here. So any small impact, this thing can go up or down. But overall, you can definitely see this dotted line is flattening uh, and I think moving in the right direction. We're still under phase one, which is a stay-at-home executive order. It's tentatively to expire 5 p.m. this Friday, May 22nd, and then hopefully we're going to move into phase two. Phase two is, in my opinion, going to be uh, a much more significant feeling of some normalcy because the stay-at-home executive order will be lifted. Uh, which means, you know, we can get out and about for other reasons than what we're able to do now, but there will be strong encouragement for vulnerable populations to stay home. But phase two is going to allow for limited opening of restaurants, bars, and other businesses like salons, as long as they follow reduced capacities and some safety protocols, which I, I'm sure those details will be forthcoming. Uh, and there's a few other things that phase two will bring us, like opening public playgrounds, increase the number of public gatherings, uh, et cetera. And then after phase two, we're going to go to phase three. That's going to be about four to six weeks after phase two. We're looking at phase three, not even starting until June 19th, somewhere to July 3rd. And of course, those restrictions will be even more reduced than phase two. Remember the three W's, wear a face covering, wash your hands for 20 seconds and use hand sanitizer and wait six feet apart from other people to keep your distance. If you need any cotton face cloth, 
coverings, Enderamels, shop.enderamels.com, and you can get $2 a mask, and they have youth and adult sizes available, and you can see right here on the screen, there's their website, and also a phone number you can call, 1-800-334-8605, option one. Mecklenburg County data, we're at 2,589 positive cases. We held at 63 deaths for almost a week in Mecklenburg County. There has been one uh, reported new death, so now we're at 64. Uh, so we'll see as the days come how that death count, if it holds. I mean, any death is one too many. Uh, however, uh, 63 deaths being flat for almost a week, I thought was encouraging. Almost all deaths were among older adults greater than 60 years old, and three deaths were 50 to 59. And all deaths occurred with adults with underlying chronic illnesses, and more than half the deaths were connected to active outbreaks at long-term care facilities. So the message here is if you're uh, in a vulnerable, more senior position, you need to be very, very careful. But that's really where the death rate seems to be hitting the most. And this uh, uh, heat map here shows cases by county. This came from the CDC. I've got a little blue arrow showing Mecklenburg County. Uh, obviously, we are, uh, you know, have, we're in the darker red here because our number of cases. But this gives you a sense of all the cases, all the counties in North Carolina, and where the dark red versus light red versus pink versus gray. Uh, but definitely, urban areas uh, have higher hit rates, and of course, that's because of population and density. Uh, U.S. Congressman Greg Murphy could not be with us today. He sent me a really great photo. This is uh, Dr. Murphy in the operating room with uh, three uh, other, looks like surgeons or, or nurses or whoever they are, but they're all wearing their PPE, and I just I wanted to share with you. This is Dr. Greg Murphy, who's a congressman from North Carolina's 3rd District and has been a regular panelist for us. Uh, this is a neat photo. He sent this to me just a little while ago. He can't join because he was heading into surgery. Uh, now, we uh, have always had Dr. Jack, he's a local doctor, Dr. Jack Faircloth is his full name, but I like to call him Dr. Jack, uh, and he's a medical doctor with Atrium Health right here on the ground in Huntersville, and uh, we're going to see if he's on the phone to give us any updates. Are you there, Dr. Jack? Yes, John, thank you for You got it. All right, so <clears throat> a couple, I'll just answer uh, some of the common questions I've been getting from patients lately. Um, one of the questions is, um, what is our hospital capacity for treatment in the ICU and our ventilator capacity at the at the uh, current date? So as of today, we have really good news to report. The hospitals locally have six times the numbers of available uh, ventilators versus the current ventilators in use. So even with elective surgeries reopening, people going back into hospitals for uh, things from moving around, getting getting hurt, uh, we still have a, a huge number of available ventilators. Uh, ICU beds, we have 40 to 50%, depending on the hospital, of ICU bed openings. Um, so we have a capacity to care, uh, not just for COVID-19, but anything. So if anyone's having any serious problems, serious symptoms, please see your doctor, please call uh, for help because we don't want you to think that we don't have capacity or that it is an unsafe place. Um, another common question is, uh, based on Georgia opening sooner, do we have any data to, to suggest that Mecklenburg County or North Carolina will be in good, a good shape for going into phase two on May 22nd? And I have uh, good news there as well. Georgia has uh, seen a flat uh, or steady number of cases since reopening, and that is across their state almost entirely. There's a, a few hot spots, but for the most part, um, since they opened their shelter in place uh, April 30th, they are uh, 18 days into that phase of opening, and they're doing fine uh, from a case rate uh, standpoint. Now, they did leave medically fragile and, quote, elderly Georgians uh, at home until June 12th, so it doesn't mean they're fully open. It just means that when less vulnerable people do re-enter using guidelines for distancing, it looks like the case rates in the southeast uh, 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 area, especially Georgia, have not shown that to be a problem. Another question is, how close are we to herd immunity? Uh, the answer there is uh, not very close at all. So the, the largest antibody testing, that's a test to see who's had the virus already. Uh, done on any community was just finished in Spain this weekend, so it enlisted 70,000 uh, volunteers in the community. And surprisingly, uh, since Spain was one of the hardest hits, actually, when you look at deaths per capita, they were higher than the U.S., higher than higher than Italy. They had 
uh, something like 27,000 deaths there, which was a, a huge percentage of their uh, total population. But surprisingly, they only had 5% test positive for antibodies. So this is the largest study to date on antibodies, largest of the community, and it just tells us that we're nowhere near close to herd immunity here, which we need maybe 50, some say 60% to have the virus before it doesn't continue to spread. Uh, la I'll end with a few uh, questions about diagnostic and antibody testing. Both our major healthcare systems, Atrium Health and Novant Health, have antibody testing. Um, the way to access Novant is to go to the website uh, gohealthuc for urgentcare.com. You can schedule your own appointment at an urgent care for an antibody test. That may take a few days. They don't have in house testing like Atrium. Atrium's testing is either through your doctor within Atrium or in two days, you can call 704-468-8888 and get a testing regardless if you're an Atrium Health patient or not for the antibody. Um, and then last, for diagnostic testing, they both have test mobile testing sites open. If you don't have symptoms and you want a diagnostic test or your company wants you to have a diagnostic test, Atrium Health has set aside two mobile sites per day to be uh, for testing of asymptomatic people for uh, the diagnosis of coronavirus, they have to call their number. That's the 468-8888 number because they, they rotate those sites um, daily, Monday through Friday. Um, I guess the last point is just where are we with a vaccine? We now have over 100 coronavirus vaccines in trial. We have eight in human trials already. Several are moving into later phase trials. Um, it's, it's really a, a fast race, but the science, if you listen to uh, vaccine experts, the science is um, we really won't have a full supply to vaccinate the general population probably into, well into two, uh, 2021. Uh, if, any, if there's any talk of early availability, it may be for the uh, healthcare workers, essential workers. Um, it's a vaccine that has to be spread around the world, so it's going to dilute the, uh, the capacity if, if we cross the scientific uh, hurdle of having a safe and effective vaccine. So there's a lot of ifs. So I just wouldn't listen to uh, the political or business side of how fast those vaccines are out. They're really, it's really a slow process, but that's it. Thank you so much, Dr. Giant. We appreciate you and stay safe. I know you're on the front line, so we appreciate that. Uh, now moving to Mecklenburg County, Commissioner Pat Cotham. Commissioner, are you with us today? Yes, I am. Yes, I hey, am. Thank you. Yeah, of course. The mic is yours. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. And a lot of what I was going to talk about has already been mentioned, so I'm going to uh, scale this back a little bit. Um, uh, things that are happening this week, um, uh, the governor is having a um, briefing today at 2 o'clock. And from what I understand, um, just as Dr. Um, um, Jack just talked about, there there is a, a new directive from the Department of Health and Human Services that the a guidance recommends that clinicians test any patient in whom COVID is suspected and also uh, populations, um, regardless of symptoms, those are the ones that are, you know, including people who have uh, severe illnesses and are over 65, uh, people from historically marginalized populations, healthcare workers, um, frontline and es essential workers, uh, whether that be someone in a grocery store or a gas station, uh, someplace where there's also social distancing is difficult. So, um, whereas in the beginning of the testing, it seemed like um, you know, you couldn't get tested unless you had symptoms. And so now they're going to open that up and they're trying to increase testing. Uh, the goal in Mecklenburg County was to have 13,000 uh, tests a week. And I believe last week they got, they didn't make it, but they did 10,000. So th that's a good, you know, they're on the head of it in the right direction. And so that's, um, that's good news. That's good news. Um, uh, the um, I've had a lot of calls from North Mecklenburg about the um, the uh, Reedy Creek Park and beach being open and our, you know, just our swimming pools and things like that from the county. And um, I did uh, contact over the weekend the head of park and recreation 
and asked him about because Memorial Day is coming and people just people want to know something about something. <laughs> and he told me that they are reviewing the facilities uh, based on the uh, guidance from the CDC and the health department. And they're looking at their staffing and they will announce um, before Memorial Day what the plans are for swimming pools and the aquatic center and Reedy Creek. Um, you know, so hopefully they'll be able to open some of those things so families can get out and reduce their stress. And um, so I will look forward to hearing about more about that. And um, uh, I, I do want to continue to to bring the message that um, I'm I'm really worried about um, mental health. We're just not talking about that as much. And um, ex the people who are talking about it are the mental health experts. I'm on a lot of um, Twitter messages with the leaders in psychiatry at Atrium and and uh, Novant and and experts from around the country, and um, they're just talking about that this is going to be another problem, not only affecting adults but children, and um, and. So it's just something that, I mean, I'm not any expert, but it's something that uh, I'm going to be asking a lot of questions about and and find out more. And I have asked questions at the county about what are we doing to support our mental health groups and information that we can create to pass out to families that might need help. Because there, unfortunately, there still is a big stigma with mental health. And um, this is isolation that we're living in, this uncertainty has heightened uh, mental health, uh, you know, anxiety for a lot of people and uh, depression. And uh, children have been affected because they're used to, they miss their friends and they can't, you know, go places they normally go to. And I've heard from a lot of, you know, parents and that are very concerned about their children and like the children are just being difficult and they're not usually difficult and, and stressed. So, and I, I also have heard from, you know, teachers who are grieving and they miss their, they miss their kids and they worry about them. And in some parts of the county, um, because of lack of Wi-Fi, they may not have been able to participate in the classing of the classwork. And so teachers care about kids and they're worried about their kids and, so there's just a lot of uh, worry and concern, and um, it's uh, something that, you know, isn't going to be able to just switch back. So we have to be patient with each other, and and I would just encourage people to, when you check on your neighbors or your relatives, your friends, your 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 sister, your mother, not just say, you know, how you doing, but, you know, how are you really doing? Are you... How are you handling this? Is just get people talking will be will be helpful. So I just ask uh, people to keep that in mind. And um, the the last thing I want to say is the um, the county manager is having another one of her business roundtables tomorrow Tuesday from 9:30 to 11. It will be um, uh, on YouTube on the Mecklenburg County site, and um, and she's trying to get information just to help to give a as we reopen things you know to give any kind of a lessons learned from other areas so whatever so uh, she is definitely working hard on that so um, that's um, that's the update and um, that's all from Mecklenburg County wonderful awesome thank, <laughs> thank you Commissioner Coffin appreciate you thank you for the thorough update uh, moving to the town of Cornelia so uh, we have hopefully Mayor Woody Wash with us today Mayor are you there Yes, I am, John. I'm right here. Yeah, Thank you very much. Uh, I want to provide you an updated uh, list of numbers here as it relates to Cordia's particular uh, uh, numbers for just our town. So it looks like the total number of residents, Cornelius, uh, that are infected is 75, and the total number of Cornelius residents that are deceased due to uh, this uh, COVID-19 is 16. Uh, 67 of those 75 are in autumn care. Uh, the number of individuals in autumn care total that are deceased are 18. Uh, 
looks like that the uh, total number of Autumn Care Mecklenburg County residents that are COVID-19 positive are 46, and the total number of Autumn Care Mecklenburg residents uh, that are deceased are 16. So that's that's the update on numbers as of the 15th this past Friday. So I wanted to provide you that. Uh, we're uh, pretty much waiting in uh, in limbo right now for direction from Governor Cooper about phase two and whether it will occur uh, this Friday the 22nd or not. Uh, but in the meantime, the town is, redevelop is developing a phase two reopening uh, plan to phase staff back into the office. As I've said in the past, uh, we're allowing as much work at home opportunities for our employees just to keep them on the payroll and keep things moving as possible. A lot of them are taking advantage of that and it's going very well. Uh, but we continue to uh, uh, look at that and we'll be in sync with really how the next phase is moving forward. So we continue to uh, host very well supported virtual events. This past Friday, we had a virtual jazz fest. The Cornelius Jazz Fest is a very popular event, which is typically held in Smithfield Park. Uh, this year, we did it all virtually from D9, uh, the uh, brewery, one of our breweries in Cornelius. And it went really well. Last I heard, we had over 300, uh, excuse me, 3,000 folks out there visiting and listening in to that jazz festival this past weekend. And uh, just this morning, I actually uh, participated in a video for our upcoming virtual Memorial Day celebration. It just wouldn't be the same without having a, a really nice Memorial Day celebration within our town in conjunction with our American Legion Post 86. So we did uh, do the video, prepared that, and it's a beautiful, beautiful ceremony that will air this coming Monday, Memorial Day at 10 a.m. So be sure and tune in for the Cornelius Memorial Day celebration. And that's all I have, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mayor, that was a great update, appreciate you. Uh, moving to the town of Huntersville, we have Mayor John Anarella. Uh, Mayor, the mic's yours. Well, uh, thank you, and I uh, appreciate uh, you having this call. It's uh, certainly good for me to hear from uh, Mayor Washam and, and Dr. Jack and Commissioner Cotham. Um, I'm just going to basically talk about uh, area businesses and what they're doing. And it's just really an, an amazing thing to see how resourceful businesses are. Um, and then they really have adapted to the current situation. So Friday and a little bit of Saturday, I went around to a bunch of different businesses in Huntersville and just talk to them about what, what they're doing, what, what kind of procedures they're putting in place, uh, how they feel about opening, are they getting their employees back? Uh, and pretty much, uh, and it might just be because there's a short-term um, demand, but pretty much uh, the businesses were uh, really starting to ramp up and they can't wait to be fully opened on uh, hopefully May 22nd. And one of the things I hope that will come from the governor uh, is just very clear guidelines for all the businesses, but not really telling the businesses how they should run their business. Because it was amazing to talk to uh, a jeweler about what they were doing or uh, a restaurant about what they were doing. And it's, it's stuff that I would never have come up with because I don't, I'm not in that business. Uh, so hopefully after uh, May 22nd, uh, we'll get uh, rolling here and get the economy back going. The other good news is that uh, all the businesses I talked to were all rehiring or had not uh, fired uh, or laid off uh, their employees. And there were about seven of them, uh, different businesses that I talked to. Um, the county, as uh, Commissioner Cotham said is coming up with a, a toolkit for uh, small businesses with guidelines on how they can open and examples of things they can use in their stores or the restaurants uh, to uh, help with uh, social distancing. Um, we are also uh, going to be doing a more virtual Memorial Day ceremony. Uh, I'll be videotaping that with Legion members on Thursday, and it'll be live uh, on video on 11 o'clock on uh, Memorial Day, Monday, and that will uh, also be on Facebook. So if you don't want to watch at 11, it'll be on there 
after that. And then I just want to remind everybody, you all live in Mecklenburg County, and on Wednesday, it'll be the 245th anniversary of the county, Mecklenburg Deck Day, which uh, they declared their independence from England. And um, I feel like a lot of us want to declare our independence from stay at home. So uh, we'll tie those two things together, and hopefully this week we'll, we'll all feel a little bit better and uh, be back to normal. And that's yeah. all I have. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Just one quick little neat thing about uh, Mech Day. Uh, the folks in England said that, uh, that uh, those folks are like a bunch of hornets. And so Mecklenburg County was known as a hornet's nest, and that is where the Charlotte Hornets gets their name from. That's how they derive their name. So uh, move, moving on, uh, let's see, Town of Davidson, uh, Town Commissioner Matthew Fork could not join today. Uh, he's, he said he will join Wednesday, so hopefully we'll hear an update from them. But I think they're you know, working on some plans, uh, perhaps for as we approach phase two as well for the Town of Davidson. Uh, there are no new updates from CMS board member Rhonda Cheek, uh, but she's been on our calls giving us some updates through this uh, journey, but nothing to report new uh, today. And then uh, we have Bill Russell. So the CEO of Lake Norman Chamber of Commerce. I think we're just coming off of a small business week, but uh, it's always business week at the chamber. So we've got Bill. Mike is yours, sir. I feel like I have to have a history lesson after all that. So I'll just remind people that the oldest standing house and store in all of North Carolina is located in Huntersville. Uh, it's the U Torrance House and Store, and uh, we'll be opening up soon. For, for tours on the first and third Sundays or by appointments. So, uh, again, there's there's my only history <laughs> history kid. Um, I want to sort of uh, ditto John Anarella. I had the opportunity, John, last Thursday uh, with John McHugh, who, who is one of our ambassadors and takes uh, a lot of our photos. We went around to businesses in Davidson and Cornelius and Huntersville and, and talked to a lot of the retail stores. And and just as John alluded to, uh, everybody was taking uh, stringent precautions. Some would not even allow you to come in unless you had a mask on. Uh, some, if you didn't have a mask, they had the the, uh, the the hand sanitizers and masks right there by the door as you came in. Uh, almost all of them were wiping things down after the customers came in. Uh, they are very anxious, as we've discussed all along, about getting back in business. The businesses who are not in phase one are really looking forward to phase two. Uh, so I, I think, uh, I think by and large, everybody is, they, they've, they might've enjoyed staying home a little bit and getting to know their family a little bit better and doing some things, but everybody is anxious to get back to work. You talked about small business week and my gosh, we had two weeks of activities uh, starting a couple of weeks ago, a lot of virtual seminars, but I haven't had a chance uh, since I, we did we did a conference call Friday, but we weren't on it. We had three nights, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of last week, some motivational speakers. And last Wednesday night, we had Steve Gilliland, who is a motivational speaker, but he talked about emerging from this pandemic. And we had the opportunity to have Sally Ashworth, the executive director of Visit Lake Norman, and two of our hospitality members, Benet Patel with Shree Hospitality, who has the Marriott uh, Courtyard and the Residence Inn in Huntersville. And also Joe Douglas, who has 131 and Cowboy. And they shared some of the things that they have been doing. And I think the thing that really impressed me, John, is, and you know Vinay Patel real well. Vinay said that, yeah, some of the hourly people, they had to cut back. But they held every one of their employees. They didn't let them go. They didn't furlough them. They kept them on. And I think that says volumes about the character of that type of business. But by and large, when we talk to these businesses, uh, they're thrilled to be able to get back at doing what they do best. Um, both John and Woody and Pat talked about the various manuals and, and guides. We have a Restart LKN guide on our website, a couple of other guides too, particularly for retail businesses. We encourage you to go to lakenormanchamber.org to see those, those guides and those products uh, as you get your business back open, whether you're a retailer or small business, this will assist you. And what are the procedures and guidelines and things that you can be doing to make sure that you're having a safe environment, not only for your employees, but your customers and and uh, prospects and, and clients. So again, John, as I've said time and time again, thank you so much for, for hosting these things. I talk to so many small business owners and sometimes people who are 
just retired or stay-at-home moms, stay-at-home dads who are getting some of their resources and knowledge about, about what's going on from these calls. And you're bringing together a vast resource of people from a wide variety of, of industries. So thank you for putting these together and thank everybody for their support of our business community. Yeah, thank you, Bill, and thanks for the kind words. You're, you're very appreciated, so thank you. Uh, just uh, a quick mention here, there is a Huntersville Regional Chamber. There's a website there with some resources. We've had an open invitation to them uh, for this entire series of calls, so I just want to share that with you. And then visit Lake Norman. Uh, just, you know, this obviously is a great group. They really service, obviously, all of Lake Norman, but you can get some care packages uh, that you can ship out with all this paraphernalia and put some special messages there. Uh, one thing that they sent me today uh, that I just wanted to share with you is there's a, a golf uh, turn a tournament that happens at River Run. It's called the uh, Symmetra or Symmetra Tour Championship. I may have butchered that, but uh, it, it's uh, been rescheduled for November 3rd through 6th at River Run Country Club. It's usually a three-day competitive tournament, but it's going to be actually a four-day competitive tournament this year, and that has been rescheduled for November 3rd through 6th. So just wanted to share that with you because they shared it with me. Um, just want to thank all of our panelists. Obviously, I could not do this call without them. We have a combination of a lot of folks, uh, both did Democrat and Republican, this uh, the pandemic has and knows no politics, at least not on this call, that's for sure. Uh, and I post these calls every Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, on my Twitter account, John Ray Bradford. You can follow me there. And I also put it on Elect Bradford. That's where I post them. Uh, and then you can share them from there. So uh, if you're interested in getting these as soon as I post them, you can go and follow both of those and you'll see them. Our next briefing will be Wednesday, May 20th. Every Wednesday, we have the United States Small Business Administration, North Carolina Director Thomas Stith III, who gives updates from a United States Small Business Administrative perspective. That's a great update. Uh, he'll be on the call Wednesday, as well as hopefully our other panelists. Uh, if you have an email, lkntogether at gmail.com, send me an email, send me your concerns, your thoughts, LKN together at gmail.com. We are stronger together. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. This does conclude today's briefing call. Thank you.